Are you ready to say goodbye to the constant ups and downs of the artist income roller coaster? Whether you're a full-time artist who wants to increase and stabilize your income, a part-time musician who wants to go full-time, or a hobbyist who needs to fund your passion projects, this podcast will equip you with the tools, resources, and inspiration to make it happen. My name is Bree Noble. I'm a musician, best-selling author, and educator whose mission is to help musicians like you to increase the income you're already making and tap into new income streams so you can create a more diverse, stable, reliable income from music and finally ditch the starving artist mentality. Now let's dive into The Profitable Musician Show. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the podcast. My name is Bree Noble, and I am here today with my friend Kayla Brook. And Kayla and I, I was just thinking, I think we may have known each other for at least 10 years. She started out having her music played on Women of Substance, and then I uh, started having her in some of my programs, and now she's my community manager for the female musician community, and I've gotten to know her even more and just seeing all of her talents in just looking at things in very different and interesting ways and teaching things that no one else is talking about. So that's what I'm excited for her to do for you guys today. Uh, She gave a training for our community and I was like, oh my gosh, like, well, I need to have this on the podcast because I think it's not only like a, a different perspective on how you can be more effective and, and eventually more profitable with the idea of feeding your soul, which we're going to talk about. But, you know, she really presents some practical ways that you can do that. So it's not just a mindset shift. It is something that you can actually implement into your life. So before we get into that, Kayla, I would love to have you give them a brief background just on yourself as a musician and how you kind of came to this feeding your soul idea. Sure. And I'm really excited to be here today and to to be on the podcast again with you, Brie. Uh, it's always a pleasure and an honor. Uh, my name is Kayla Burke, and I am a singer and a songwriter from Canada. I was in BC for most of my life, but I just moved to Alberta. So now I'm an Alberta gal and I'm going to look for a good cowboy hat and um, do all of that sort of thing. But uh, feeding my soul, where that came from, I did a show a few years back, probably just before the pandemic. And uh at the end of it, and you might have felt this way before when you've done things, I just felt fantastic for about seven days. I felt content. I felt fulfilled. I just was, I, I it just, the only words that I could describe it was that my, my soul had been fed and I couldn't figure out why this concert made all the difference because I've done tons and tons of concerts and they don't always, you know, feel that way. And so I couldn't figure out what that was. So I started to write down what it was about that concert and what I, you know, what was different about it compared to other things. And then I also started to keep track of uh, my good days and what I was doing and why I started to feel that way. And then I started to keep track of the days that I felt kind of crappy and what I was doing on those days. And eventually I started to come up with this pattern and I realized that I had found a key to feeding your soul on a regular basis so that we start living a life that feels more fulfilled. And we're not always, you know, chasing uh, the rabbit or whatever it is, or on that wheel of life that we can get in, but whether we're actually living it uh, purposefully and enjoying it. And that is really important to me. And so when I discovered it, I started to want to share it with everybody because I thought it was such a beautiful thing. And so that's, that's where it all came from. That's, that's awesome. I mean, I I definitely have those experiences where a concert just kind of puts you on a high, you know, and like also just that interaction with your audience and, you know, things like that. And you're like, how can I reproduce this every day? And it's, it's so hard when you go back to your mundane life. Right. So this is what I love about what you teach is it helps us bring some of that into our everyday life without making us feel like we have to live some like movie star lifestyle. No, we don't. It's it's full of the little things. And you know what I discovered, really, the key to it, and you mentioned it right there, was with your connection. You connected with the audience. 
And the key to feeding your soul is connection. But it's not just connection with an audience. It's going to be connection with ourselves. It's going to be connection with family. It's going to be connection with nature and community and our spiritual side and our creative side. When I take a look at this concert, that I did, what I had done is I had rented a studio or a theater to put on a concert before I had written the songs. And I was also working very closely with some other musicians. And then I, you know, I did the show and it went over really well and I connected with the audience. Well, when I put all of these things together, I was way out of my comfort zone and I was using my creativity. I had challenged myself. And then when I was on stage, I was connecting with the audience and I was also connecting with the fellow musicians that I had. And I had created this beautiful, perfect storm that created this moment that, that lived with me for so long. And so It's the connection that's really important when it comes to our own self-care. And then there are boosters, which I just mentioned, which is spontaneity, challenge, and getting out of our comfort zone. When we connect with these specific things and we add the spontaneity and challenge and getting out of our comfort zone, we create these moments that will last with us for lifetimes at times. And so um, how do we take all of this and how do we make it work for us and the way for that to happen is for us to be intentional we can be intentional with our spontaneity even if we become intentional with feeding our soul on a daily basis we can actually create a life that's worth living and we can create a life that we enjoy and that matters and gives us the moments and the events that make um, life happy and life enjoyable you know we talk about it uh we've done trainings on it before where we talk about creating moments in our show right Mm -hmm. moments for the audience with the stories and the different things and that and the audience remembers those moments and it carries them with and they carry it with them well it's the same thing we create moments in our own life so uh if you don't mind me going through and just uh, doing a training on this, I would really love to do that. Is that okay, Brie? Yeah, I... absolutely. I would love for you to go through those connection points and how we establish them, the different boosters, and then like all your practical ideas on how we can put those into our calendar. All right. Well, then let's just go into it. What I would love for you to do is you uh, grab a piece of paper and you do a brain dump. And what I want to you to think about is the next 90 days now when we're doing this right now recording this right now it's october it's early october i don't know when this is going to come out but we we have october november and december which are just huge months there's thanksgiving is in there and there's fall is in there and the changing of the seasons and then we've got christmas and all of these different things so it's a beautiful time for you to start your passage into Um, and your own personal training into feeding your soul every day because there's just so much that we can draw from. So what I want you to do is think in the next 90 days and do a brain dump and a brain dump of things that you would like to experience, things that you would like to accomplish in 90 days and things that you think that would make you feel good. And what's important is that you add some big items in there like a big ticket concert, maybe somebody's coming to town that's really big that you've always wanted to see. You know, you might put something like that in or a trip or going away for a weekend. And depending on your budget of what big ticket items are, I remember when we were really struggling financially, a big ticket item, (coughs) excuse me, would be a smaller concert that I could go to that was maybe 50 bucks or, you know, a ticket or something like that. It doesn't matter what the level it is. It has to just be on your level of what would be exciting for you to go to. So write down a bunch of things like that. Add some medium sized things in there. Like maybe you'd like to do a Friendsgiving. You know, you've never done something like that before and you'd like to have a bunch of friends over and do a Friendsgiving or a special evening with your spouse or a community get together or something that takes it's it's something that takes a little bit of planning on your part. And so just write down a bunch of things that you think that you would like to do and that kind of thing. And then fill the rest in with activities that you would like to do or try or learn. You know, maybe you just want to go see a blockbuster movie that's coming out later in the year. And that's something that you really want to do or 
a sport that you've never done. Maybe you've never tried cross country skiing or you've never gone snowshoeing and it's something that you've always wanted to do. Write that down. Or there's a park or a book that you really want to read. Just write all of those different things down in this brain dump. And while you're going through this brain dump, I want you to think about your relationships, your relationships with your spouse, with fellow musicians. Um, It could be with um, your children, your siblings, your friends, anything like that. And think about for a couple of minutes, how do you want to deepen those relationships with your with your family or whatever? And it might be as simple as saying, you know what, I think I'm going to write a card to my friends once a week for the next 30 days or 90 days or something like that and write a a specific note that you're going to say to someone about it uh, that you're thinking of them and that you love them and this is what they've done for you or what they mean to you in your life and you're just going to do that and that's going to be something that's going to deepen your relationships or you could plan a surprise get away with your spouse or a friend or a sibling you could say i want to have a date with my child whether they're old or whether they're younger and you know have a have something like that um you know you might want to go to a music festival or to a specific play at christmas or maybe there's a beautiful choir that you like to listen to Um, uh, anything like that, but anything that you can do that's going to make your relationships better. Start to use your imagination with that. And I'll tell you a story about my best friend, Eva. A couple of years ago, she made an intention that for the entire year, she was going to work on her girl her girlfriends and her relationships with her girlfriends. And so what she said to me, she called me up and she told me my intention this year is to deepen my relationship with you. So I want to meet you once a month to have a coffee or go for lunch or we can go for dinner or a drink or go to the park or walk or she goes, it doesn't matter. I just want to see you once a month. And I said, cool. I'd love that. And so without fail, Eva would call me at the end of the month and say, I got my planner. What are we going to do? And I would look at my planner and we put a thing together and say, well, how about we have breakfast this time? And so we would do that. And we went to a beautiful park one time in the summer and we just walked around and we spent the whole day together and we just had a wonderful time. Well, her making the intention to deepen the relationship with me. And I've known her since uh, I was in my 20s. We were, we've we been together for a very long time. And that, but her taking the intention of deepening the relationship with me had such a huge impact on our relationship. We're so close. And it just meant so much to me that she decided that this was something that she wanted to do. So being intentional, intentional about something like this is really, it has a great impact on your relationships. So doing something like writing a card to to your friends, which is something that I did for a good portion of the year, just every week I would write a note and a little card to another friend and they would get it in the mail and just say, I'm thinking about you. And I remember this memory with, that we did and blah, blah, blah. And I would go on and I just want you to know, I love you. And, you know, just a little letter note, whatever it was for me inside these blank cards. And wow, I would get the phone calls and it's like this, I'm in tears. This is just so beautiful. Thank you so much. And it was just, it was this wonderful way to enrich the relationships with my friends and things like that. So it's important that we start to do that. So once we've got this page that's full of all of these different things, then I want you to write down on a piece of paper with space in between the different connection points. And these connection points are nature, your sense of adventure and fun, challenge, community, friends and loved ones, your own self-care and spirituality. And I want you to take all of the things that you wrote and start to put them under these categories. Now, for instance, say you said you wanted to go snowshoeing this winter. Now, snowshoeing could be a sense of adventure and fun for some people. It could be a challenge for other people because they've never done it. 
It could be just getting out in nature to some other people. It just depends on how you look at it. This is your world. So you want to take these things and put them all under these connection points. Because remember what I said is that when we connect with these different areas of our life, that's what makes our life feel more well-rounded because we're, you know, we're trying to, to, to utilize all of these different areas. So then you take all of these items and you categorize them with the connect, connection points. And then once that's done, just go through and highlight things that stand out to you. Things that's like, oh, you know what? This, I'd really like to do this. This excites me. I want to do this. And just highlight a few things. And when you're doing that, your, your creative juices will start flowing. And you also want to look and make sure that you've got everything filled up. If you're missing a few items then in, in the different sections, because and typically it probably will be self-care because that's where we tend to do. So you want to look at that and say, what can I do just for me that's going to be really interesting? And so it might be, you know, um, is sitting down and, and reading. It could be, I'm like totally into bubble baths right now. It's just like, that's been my thing lately is to just in the evening, a couple nights a week to just go and get my book and do a bubble bath and just lay and soak. And, and I'm really enjoying that. And for years I didn't do stuff like that, but I'm starting to do more of that now. So a uh, little things like that, that are going to uh, fill those spaces in spirituality is another one that we can tend to lose. And so it might be journaling. It might be going to church. It might be joining a group. There's different things that you could put in there as well. So once we have done that, then it's time to pull out our calendar. And I know that it seems like a lot of work, but this is dreaming. This is just imagining a life that's full and wonderful. And it's full of things that make you happy. So it's not work. It's it's things that that feel good. And, and, and that's really what it's all about. And your dreams and your aspirations for what you want for your life. And notice I haven't said anything about work. I'm not talking about doing that unless your challenge for your work is uh, I, you know, I, I'm going to practice my guitar or my piano, or I'm going to do vocal exercises or something like that. And that's going to be a challenge that I want to do for myself. Other than that, I really haven't mentioned work. It's really about the things that um, are, are, are making our life more well-rounded. Not that work doesn't do that, but you know, it's about, um, it, it's about uh, doing things that make us feel good. Now, we want to add these things to the calendar for the next 90 days. So this is when you're going to open up your calendar. And I want to start with the big ticket items. OK, so if you decide that you want to go away for a weekend with your spouse or with your girlfriends to a spa in New York or do you know what I mean? Whatever it is that you choose that this is something that you really want to do. Then you look at it and say, OK, um, you know, maybe you need to save up some money or something like that. So then, you know, you've got to save 500 a month for the next three months or a thousand a month or whatever it is in your world that you want to do. And so then you say, OK, well, maybe I'll put this in December or there's no rules. You could put it for February. You know, it doesn't really matter. But you want to take a big ticket item, something that you're really going to look forward to and put that in and then say, OK, what is it that I need to do to get there? I need to save some money. I need to invite my girlfriends and see when we're available. I need to maybe book, um, you know, the hotel or whatever it is that you need to do. If it's, you know, going to see, I guess Elton John is no longer performing. He's done his tour. But, you know, if Elton John was coming and you really wanted to do that, then it was like, OK, you know, I need to get the tickets and I need to, you know, maybe plan dinner. There's different things that you could do around that. So you want to write down the things that you need to do in order to make this big ticket thing happen. And this is going to be the thing that you really look forward to over the next 90 days or 120 days or whatever it is. For you, um, you know, you put that stuff in there. Then you want to take a look at medium sized things. So uh, let's, you know, let's take the next quarter and, you know, maybe you say, I've never done a cookie exchange or something like that. So nah, why not? Let's do a cookie exchange at my house and have the neighbors over, the different people that I don't know, and do something like that. So you could do that, or you could decide that you want to have a Friendsgiving and not just a Thanksgiving, but you want to have a Friendsgiving and you want to have these different friends 
that you've had over, or maybe you want to have a cocktail party or a dinner party, or you want to organize a community event, or maybe you would like to do a fundraiser for the community for the homeless or something like that. So something that takes planning, something that, um, you know, that you've got to do a little bit of work to get to. And, but it's also going to be something that you enjoy. It's not something that you feel like you have to do. If you're not, I love putting on a party. I mean, I love putting on a party. So I remember one of my best ones that I did was a Julie Julia party. And I had everybody come over and we had to cook French food and we had to do it all with uh, Julia Child's cookbook and each we had stations and everybody had to wear pearls and, you know, and I put this whole thing together. And then once we had had dinner, we sat down and we watched Julie Julia and it was the best evening. Like we had a wonderful time and my girlfriends kept saying, can you do another? Can you do another? And it was like, it was a lot of work for me to do, but it was wonderful. And it was one of those things that stayed with us for a long time, but it took planning. I love doing stuff like that. You might not like doing stuff like that, but what you could do is say, yeah, but what if I got my girlfriends together and I hired a chef to come in and teach us how to do something? Well, that might be, and then the workload's not on you so much. And then you could say, and then, and and I'll make them do French food and we'll eat that. And then we can watch a movie or whatever, you know, you might, you, you like use whatever works for you that makes you happy, or you could all go to a French restaurant and then decide to, you know, whatever, but it still takes planning on your part to put the whole thing together. So that is something that you could look at. So you want to add some medium sized things into your 90 day plan. But the key here is to not overwhelm yourself. Don't have you know, two dinner parties and I'm going to also do a big fundraiser for something and things like that. Cause then, then it just, it becomes work and it's not enjoyable and all of those other things. You want to look at your work schedule and your workload and all these different things and say, I think at this time I should be able to do this particular thing that I would like to do. And I'm going to do one in the three months, you know, or two max, but just one thing to kind of give you something to work towards. And then once that stuff is done, um, what if, what do I got in my notes here? Um, yeah. So you write down all the things that I just don't want to leave out little details here. You want to write down all the things that you need to do to make that everything happen. So whether you're planning the menu, getting the groceries, cooking the food, do all of those things, just like with regular planning, you want to chunk it down into little pieces of the things that you need to do. And you're going to put that into your planner. And then here's where the nitty gritty happens. And this is the part that I use mostly. So I will go through and I will plan a few things. Like for me this month, I'm going to see the Doobie Brothers. I'm so excited to go see the Doobie Brothers. And here's the thing, I'm going by myself. I'm going by myself because I couldn't find anybody to go. And we can't. I can't go with my husband because he can't leave my dog by herself. And so... It's like, I, and I just moved to a new area and I don't know a lot of people. And I asked my son if he wanted to go and he's like, mom, you know, no. <laughs> and so I was like, and I was really bummed. And so I wasn't going to go because I was, wasn't was going to go by myself. And then I went, I mean, I'm really going to regret if I don't see Michael McDonald perform. Right. Yeah. And I thought, I'm going to go. And I'm going to drive an hour and a half and I might stay in a hotel and I'll do all of this. So I, that's my thing this month. I'm really super excited to go see um, Michael McDonald all by myself. It's my thing. And so that might not be your thing, but that's what I'm doing this month. And I'm really looking forward to it. So you want to, you want to make all of that stuff work. And then what we do is we get down to the nitty gritty and that's with our weekly planning. So I plan my week on Sundays. Um, and I, I put in all of my work stuff that I have to do. And what I like to do is I color code it. Like, I, you know, work is green because it makes money. And, uh, you know, my music is blue. I don't know why. I guess the blues, um, you know, singing the blues or whatever. So, I, you know, anything to do with my music is blue. And, um, you know, and I color code my appointments with purple and stuff like that. But then the feed my soul stuff. I highlight with like a, an orange and that's just the, the color code that I do. Well, what I look at is I look at my week and I see where the things are lacking 
And uh, I have my, you know, if I was going to go to the concert, if the Doobie Brothers was this, was this week, you know, that would be in my weekly planner. I'm going to that big orange thing. It's like, woo, that's exciting. So I have that. But what am I going to do for the rest of the week in there that is just going to feed my soul and make me feel good, right? And this is where we start to, um, uh, we get really intentional about looking at things and how we can fill uh, our week up with things. So I'll look at my week and see, do I have any appointments? Am I going to go to the doctor or, or do I have errands? When am I going to go grocery shopping? These different things. Look at it and say, are there any parks nearby that I've never been to? Or do I have a friend that lives in that area? Or is there something interesting that I could go do around that time. And so I'll give you an example of this time when I was living in Vancouver and I had to go get blood work. And it was a sunny, um, it was a summer day and I had blood work done at about nine in the morning. And so I went and I had my blood work. Now, for most of my life, I would have had the blood work and then I would have just gone home, right? Which is what most of us do. But this time I was intentional. And I decided to go to this little cafe bakery that I knew that my friend worked at. And I called her out from the back and said, hey, just, you know, saying that I'm here. And uh, we chatted for a little bit and we made arrangements to walk our dogs together on the Sunday. So I was creating another Feed My Soul moment by walking, you know, for Sunday. So I did that. Then I ordered a delicious, you know, I ordered a coffee and a delicious little breakfast sandwich thing that they made. And I grabbed that to go and I walked to the seawall and I sat at the seawall on a bench and I ate my breakfast and drank my coffee looking at the ocean. Took a few minutes. Mm. Then I got up and put my, you know, threw the stuff away and I went for a walk along the seawall, just enjoying the sunshine and walking along and doing that. But while I was doing it, I decided to play photographer, which is one of my favorite things to do because I'm not a photographer, but I decided that I was going to just play photographer as I'm in this beautiful scenery and see if I could come up with a, you know, a really cool photo. And so I was just playing around and having fun. And what that did is made me very present because I was always looking for a beautiful picture or a different angle or ooh, take a picture of that flower or something like that. And I didn't care what anybody thought. And so I was outside in nature and I was enjoying it and I was having fun. And I took that whole thing, probably took 45 minutes of my time. And then I uh, got back in my car and I drove home. I felt fantastic when it was all said and done. It was felt spontaneous. It felt, felt fun. And it was completely planned. Mm, because I sat down. Like the best day ever. I, I, that yes. sounds awesome. Because I sat down before I went and I looked at my planner and said, I'm going to do blood work. What can I do for just a little while that is going to make that more fun? Other times I've gone and see, now I knew where the seawall was, so that's fine. And I planned it around things that I knew. But then I've also gone where I went to the dentist or something like that. And it was in a different area. And so I got on Google and I said, Where's a place that I could walk? Maybe there's some trails around there. I discovered so many new trails and different things like that, that I had no idea that were in my city mm. that I had no idea existed. And they were wonderful. And I mean, sometimes the magic works and sometimes it doesn't, it might turn out to be a crappy trail. And it's like, well, okay, it doesn't matter because it's not, you're not putting pressure on yourself. You're just getting out there to discover something new. So you could look in, at an area. So you, you look at your week and you see where you have appointments or what you're going to do. And you say, is there a new park or something that I could go to and visit around there? Or maybe there's a friend and I could just meet them for coffee before or after, or they could go for the walk with me. And if it's great, yay. And if it's not, we'll go have a coffee. It's no big deal. But you just you just add the spontaneity into your life through planning and through being intentional. And what it does is it just creates moments in your life like you would create moments on stage. You want to create these, these things for you. 
So that's one of my best tips is to look at your week and schedule in how you can move things around with your appointments. And you other things that you want to do is you want to make it really easy and you want to make it without prep work. So for instance, one of the things that I had is I would sit and another thing that I would do is I would look at the weather for the week and I would see what is going to be a really nice day and whether it's going to be a crappy day. And I would feed my soul around the weather. So if it was going to be a really nice day and I happen to be working from home, but you can do this if you're working at a nine to five or something like that, too. You can sit there and go, hey, you know what? It's going to be a beautiful autumn day. I'm going to eat my lunch outside and I'm going to make a moment out of it. Right. And so I had planned in my planner, eat lunch outside on this specific day because I had looked at the weather. And so when the, you know, lunchtime came, I made myself a little lunch and I just went and sat outside and I, and I just soaked it up and enjoyed it because I planned it. And you could do the same thing when you're working in a nine to five or whatever, or you could decide that you were, um, going to what, what's, what's other things that you could do. I mean, there's all sorts of things. You could just say, I, I'm going to walk in the grass in my bare feet because mm -hmm. I haven't done that for a long time and just feel it and enjoy it or go for a walk uh, at lunchtime or at any time during the day. Those are my go-tos is to just to get out into nature and to enjoy it. Um, you know, um, so, so things like that, you want to just add that. And, and so then you could look at it and if it was raining, you could say, you know what, I'm really wanting to read this book. So I'm going to put a fire on and I'm going to make myself a cup of tea and I'm going to make myself a cup of tea in a teacup. And it's going to be in a beauty, you know, I'm going to do that. And, and, oh, you know what, ginger snap cookies, they always remind me of my mom. So I'm going to buy some ginger snap cookies and I'm going to have that with me too. And so on this night when it's going to be drainy and dreary and my husband's out or whatever, I'm going to put a fire on. I'm going to make myself a cup of tea, have a couple of ginger snaps, and I'm going to read a book. Oh, it's going to be so nice. And you're looking forward to it. And then you go and you make sure that you do it. That sort of thing. Those things feed your soul. Taking a bath, deciding, and you just make a list of all of these little things that you can do. And you highlight them in the different color if, that, if you're going to be like me. And that shows, then you can start to look at your week and you can see that it's getting a little balance in the sense that you're putting in things that feed your soul. And they don't have to take a lot of time. It doesn't have to be a big deal. It's just taking a moment for you. Um, so those are the things that you can do. And I'm just trying to look at my notes here. Um, so the strategy is to add something that feeds your soul every day and be intentional about it. And then you want to take a look at your week and you want to check the connection points because you want to make sure that you're balancing that too, right? So it's not just about you and your self-care, but it's also about connecting with a friend or so it could be like, I'm going to have a video call with a girlfriend of mine that lives further away, or I'm going to choose to, um, you know, spend, play Lego with my kid, right? and do that like there's there's different things that you can put in there and and um and and that might be something that you're going to do it maybe after school or something like that if you've got little kids you can decide that there's this is something that i'm going to take the time off to be able to do that and just spend a little time to have fun with your child i'm going to give you an um a idea of something that uh i came up with for uh october and the thing that I came up with was just the scenarios of how you can make things work for your uh, life that it would work. Say, for instance, you typically would go to the farmer's market to get your apples at this time of year. And, and that's like a, a lovely thing to do. But what if you upped it a notch and decided that you wanted to actually go apple picking and you're going to make a day of it? And you're going to invite your girlfriend to go along with you. So you go apple picking with your girlfriend and you call her up and say, let's go apple picking. And, and okay, never done it before. So, okay, we go ahead and do that. So now you're doing something new and you're doing it with your girlfriend. Okay, so you've got that covered. So now as you're driving, you decide that you're going to, or before you drive, you decide that you're going to put together a fabulous playlist of songs that your girlfriend and you can sing along with as you're driving there. 
So you use your creativity putting together your song list, and you've done that. Then uh, as you're going, you decide that you're going to have some fun with your girlfriend, and you're going to be like a little kid, and you're going to play like a scavenger hunt photography thing, and you're going to give yourself points and a prize for um, you know finding a silo and finding a cow and taking a picture of it, and you get more pic you get more points if you if you're doing a selfie with the cow, and it's just like stupid stuff. But you're you know you put together this little list of you with your girlfriend. So now when you're driving and you're singing along to the songs, you're also looking for silos and you're looking for all that stuff, and you're being present. So you do that. So that's just makes it fun. Then you go and you're picking the apples and you're having a good time just chatting with your friend. And then you see that they have a hayride there and you go, do you want to go for a hayride? Oh my God, I haven't done a hayride. So let's do that. So you go and you do that and you have fun. It's something that you haven't done before, but you're just open to it and you do it. Okay. So now you have had a fantastic day with your friend and you have, um, you know, you have just rich and enriched the relationship that you have with her because through fun and through connection and through talking and music and singing and all of those different things. And you come home and you have a whack load of apples. Now, what are you going to do? So you decide that you're going to challenge yourself and you are going to make an apple pie once a week for the whole month. And that's going to be your challenge for the month. And you are crappy at making crust, but you're determined that you're going to get better. And it's not a big deal. So you you make the uh, you make your apple pie on Sunday and then you serve it to your family for Sunday dinner because you decide that you're going to have a Sunday dinner and you're going to get the whole family together and you've decided that you're going to have Sunday dinners. So you do that and the family laughs at your crust or they say, good job, mom, or whatever, but it's okay. You've done it. You've done your thing. And so then you might make this. So then the next week you make another pie and you decide that you're going to have a picnic with your husband or with the family in the last few days of the sort of okay weather. And you're going to serve your pumpkin pie or your, your apple pie with that. And then you might um, make another pie the third week and you're going to give it to a neighbor who's just moved into the area and you're going to do that. And then the next one could be for a Friendsgiving or a Thanksgiving or something like that. Like what, whatever it is, you know what I mean? Like, but now by the time you get to the fourth week, your pie crust is starting to get pretty good. And you're kind of proud of yourself of how you're getting much better at making your pie. And so then that makes you feel good. And all of a sudden you have enriched the relationships with your family, you have learned something, a new skill. You've enriched the relationship with your uh, your friend, all because you decided to go apple picking, mm. right? And it's intentional. It's all intentional because you're looking at these different connection points and you're going, how can I make this work for me so that I feel better about my life and uh, you know, and I'm doing things that, that, that are enjoyable and I'm enriching and I'm, I'm enriching my life. And I'm looking at these different areas of the connection points and including that into my process of living. So feeding your soul can be a very intentional act that we can do if we just put a little bit of thought into it and it can be so much fun. And so that's really what I want to convey to everybody is that we do have more control over these things than we realize. And with a little thought and a little planning, it can it's a lot of fun. And when was the last time we had fun? We forget about fun, you know, and it's it's time for us to start putting that back into our life. Um, the other thing that um, I just wanted to touch base on really quickly is, is, is well, there's a couple of things. The first thing is challenge. Challenge is a really important thing. And when we challenge ourselves to do something, and I encourage you to try to challenge yourself to do something every month. Just give yourself a month of, of trying a new challenge. And it doesn't have to be a big deal. The challenge could be like saying, I'm going to do a quiet act of kindness once a week. And you plan it. You say, I'm going to do something nice for somebody every week to get yourself so that you're doing, you're more conscious of it. And you're, you know, you're trying to help people a little bit more. The one I talked about was writing a card to a friend once a week. That's a great challenge to do. Um, you know, read a book. 
once a week for a month. You know, that's a great challenge to do well or practice your instrument for 15 days in a row. You know, you won't, you, um, so that's the first thing. The second thing is don't be afraid of saying yes to things that are scary and spontaneous. So if an opportunity comes to you, um, and and I know that this goes against the whole make sure you say no thing. Say no. Like that's very important to say no to things when it's not fitting in your world. But if an opportunity comes and a girlfriend says, do you want to go apple picking with me today? Right. And you've never done it before. Say yes. Go be spontaneous because those moments are what create like the, the, they're the things that live with you for a long time. And then very quickly uh, to talk about the things that starve your soul. Uh, because there's a really quick way to do that. And one way is uh, scrolling through social media mindlessly, right? That's like that will starve your soul so quickly. Um, binge watching for hours and hours and hours just because you have nothing else to do and you're kind of bored. That will starve your soul. Wasting time when you've got a lot of work to do and you're not being uh, you're not being proactive about what it is that you need to do. That is going to starve your soul and make you feel, make you feel crappy and not being present. And the fix for a lot of this is by planning the feeding your soul. Because when you plan to do that sort of thing, it makes you more present. It makes you more present about your day. You look at it the whole day. You look at it in a, in, in a completely different way when you start to plan stuff like this. And so um, you're not going to have the time to mindlessly, you know, scroll social media. And, um, you know, you have better things to do with your time. You'd much rather go and have a bath and feed your soul and read a book for a little while than binge watch a bunch of shows for a long time just because you can. So um, that's my thing. That's feeding your soul uh, in a nutshell, in a big nutshell, but uh, it's, yeah. no, it's super awesome. I love it. I also, I think we get into this mindset that like, for example, you were talking about, we go to work, right. And we we're working all day and that, that day is, that's a shot. Like we can't do anything. Right. But I love the idea of like, oh no, you can eat your lunch in a new location. You can yeah. you know try to eat lunch with a friend, like, but you do have to be intentional because what we tend to do is we just get into this mindless routine. Every day I go to work from eight to five and that's just what I do. And, and nothing changes about that. Not realizing that we can we can make it different if we're being intentional and thinking ahead and looking at the weather and all that stuff. I know for me, I've started walking to work and it takes me almost an hour, but it changes my day. It changes the way that my day goes when I, I do bet that. it does. Yeah, I bet it does. That's my go to is is walking and getting out in nature. And the thing is, is, is too, I want to point out, too, that this is for when life is normal. This is not for when you're going through something or you've lost somebody and you're grieving or your marriage is breaking up or, you know, or, or you're moving like I did. Like the first thing that left was this. And I'll be the first to admit it. Uh, uh, when everything changed and we had to move, uh, my plans were gone. Right. But then what happens is. Uh, if you're listening to this and, and you're saying that's all fine and dandy, but you know, my life is just a real struggle right now. Uh, I understand that. And it, it is really hard. And our self care is the first thing that goes, but there comes a point when you're in the middle of this, that you still have to make the decision to say, you know what? I can go for a walk today. I can, have a bath. You, you go into the, like the real basics of things and say, what is it that I can do to make myself feel better? I know when, um, you, you know, when everything happened with us, I got evicted. That's what happened with us. And it was real panic for us for a while. I, I was scared we were going to be homeless. We, we didn't have very long to find another place. And it was really, really scary. And I was under incredible stress and what I remember one time, though, I said, 
I'm going to go see Mission Impossible. And again, I went by myself, but I needed that escape. I needed that. And I was going to have popcorn and I was going to do all the things that just to enjoy myself. And it was a, a really wonderful moment for me, even though I was by myself, but it created this thing so that I could get away from the stress and everything that was bothering me. And it helped me cope. And I started walking and doing, you know, and just going and sitting by the ocean and just you know, soaking it all in, whatever it is that you need to do that's going to make you feel better. It's it's important. So don't forget about feeding your soul when life gets tough. You don't have to do all of this. Your 90 day plan might go somewhere else, but you can still incorporate feeding your soul and being intentional about it. It is going to make coping with everything much easier. Yeah. And, you know, I've always got to bring this back around to profitability uh, mm -hmm. But I truly believe that it's going to make us more profitable because if you get burnt out, you will get to the point where you can't work or you don't want to work or thinking about work makes you sick. Like I've literally been there before because I got so burnt out. And if you inject these feed your soul moments into your regular routine, I truly believe that most of the time it will keep you from getting that burnt out feeling where you can't, you know, do the things that you need to do to actually make the money that you need in life. That is such a great point. And it is so bang on true because if your cup isn't full and you're not constantly filling up your cup to make, you know, to, to, uh, that, that you can't give anymore, that you can't do things. And yeah, you do get burnt out for sure. For sure. So how you recommend getting sitting down once a week with your calendar, right? Do you do like the 90 day plan first at the beginning of the quarter? And then every week you kind of check in on it. Like, okay, now how can I inject these smaller items? Cause you do the bigger ones at the 90 day. Yeah. So every 90 days you would sit down and do a really big, you know, a big planning session, just like you would do for your work and your goals and things like that. And then once a month, I take a look you know, at, every month I'll do a little, you know, like at October, I looked at what I wanted to do for the month of in my 90 day plan. And I made sure that those things were all in for my October plan and that I was still on schedule for that sort of thing. So you want to take a look at that. And then every week, that's when you're transferring stuff over from your month and you're putting that into your week, but then you're also filling in the blanks with all of the little things that can make that make life a little bit easier. Does that make sense? It does. It does. And you can, you can look at your work schedule too. I've done this. I'm like, oh my gosh, like I have a board meeting on Tuesday. I'm going to be exhausted. Like on Wednesday, I need to do something for myself, something fun. I need to have a coffee, you know, with a friend or something at lunchtime or, you know, something to make it feel like it's not like just this never ending drudgery, right? Because you, you worked yeah. for 14 hours the day before. It's like the next day you need to make it a feeding moment. Absolutely. And, and that's it. So what I do is when I'm planning my week, I put all my work stuff in and I put all my appointments and all the obligations that I have. I put that in first. And that's when I look at it. After that, I look at it and say, where do I need to feed my soul? What are the things that I need to do? Where can I fit them in? That's going to make it work the best for me, as well as looking at the at the weather and different things that might be going on in your neighborhood. And, you know, there's all sorts of things that you can do. Um, you know, to make it, make it work. And, and it's not about over planning your life, you know, like you don't want to, I hate having like my whole life planned out. You still want it to be, uh, to feel like it's, it's up to you what you want to do. And it's, it's, and, and have that spontaneity. But when I look at my calendar and all of a sudden it says, I look at the stuff for the day and it says, eat your lunch outside. And I'm like, oh yeah, oh, that'll be nice. Yeah. I'm going to do that. Right. Cause it's not, it's not a big deal, right? It's not hard to take your sandwich and go sit outside, right? But if you don't put it on your calendar, you probably just you won't remember not eat, eat at your desk, whatever. And then you'll yeah. miss out on that moment. 
Yeah, exactly. So, so it still feels kind of spontaneous and fun when you're looking at it for the day, but you've planned those things into your, into your world. And uh, it just, it makes, it makes such a huge difference. It really, really does. It really does. It does. It does. And, and bringing it back to musicians. I mean, those of you, if you're weekend warriors and you're going out for a weekend of shows or you're coming back from a week of touring or whatever, you know, plan a self-care day for yourself plan a day. I had a student recently who went on a quite a long tour and she came back and she was just like, she was, oh, she had nothing left, you know? And I'm like, yeah. get, and she's like, but I need to start planning the next one. I need to start booking. I'm like, give yourself a break. Yeah. Like, if you don't, you're not going to get, you're going to get burned out. Like plan some fun things just for you before you get back into the grind again. Absolutely. I, I came up oh. I had moved and then I had to fly back to Vancouver to do some concerts. And when I came home, I was exhausted just from the, the pressure of everything and, um, and having moved and just, you know, having to perform in the middle of all of this stuff and everything I came home and I was, ex- and I was useless at work, you know? So for the first, you know, two or three days, I just was useless. I, I couldn't do anything. And I, I turned to my husband and I said, I need time. I need time. So I took Friday off. I said, I'm not doing anything Friday, Saturday or Sunday. And I puttered and I just read my book and I did things that I enjoyed. And I planted, repotted my plants and these little things that were bugging me. And I got those off of my list. And that makes me happy. You know, that kind of a thing. And I just... I just puttered. Well, I felt so good. I felt so good from just having taken that time for me and just going for really long walks and looking at the autumn leaves and all of the rest of it. And, and then it made it so that I could work and do the stuff that I want to do and start connecting with other musicians in this area and the different things like that. I had the energy to do it. It didn't feel so overwhelming. It's a mindset shift for, especially for people like me that are type A Because like you said, the whole, the puttering, like I have this problem every Sunday because I work at a church and I'm, you know, on from 7 a.m. to noon and I get home and I'm just like, I'm done, you know, but like, then I walk around my house and I'm like, oh, I think maybe I'll, maybe I'll make a new recipe or maybe I'll, you know, put, you know, put these clothes where they need to go and stuff like that. And I always feel like, I'm not doing anything. Like I feel this guilt, like I've got this whole afternoon, I should be doing X, Y, and Z. And for me, the mindset changes, feeding my soul is doing something. Yes. Yeah. And I need that. Like for me, I don't know. I just, I just need to feel like I'm doing something, but if I can reframe it and be like, I am doing something. Yes. Well, Fiona flight, she says, uh, taking time for yourself is a profit building um, mm. exercise. That does sound like her. Yes. And it's true. It's, it's, it is part of, because you can't run on empty. We're not, we're not good when we're running on empty. So feeding our soul is very much a part of profit making, uh, you know, of being a profitable musician for sure. Yes. Yes. And then, and then, you know, when you refill your tank, then you can start thinking more strategically. And, you know, I'm, I'm like this on a daily basis, like by about 4 PM, I look at anything and everything looks hard because I just don't have any more gas in the tank. And I get up the next morning and everything looks easy. You know what I mean? So it's, it's like the, the daily thing. And then it's like, over a week or a month or, you know, a quarter or whatever, you have to make sure that you're continuing to fill your tank. And I love the way that you've, you've laid that all out. Now, I know you have kind of like a whole set of ideas of how to feed your soul that people can grab. Is that on your website? How can they grab that? Well, people that are on my email list, they get a feed your soul checklist of ideas that I put together for that specific month and uh, they get it every month. So, and that's the only place yes, that you the can gift get it. keeps on giving. Yes. I love it. Yes. Love it. So um, I put together, um, I, I put together a feed your soul checklist and uh, I give it to my email subscribers every month. 
and uh, they enjoy it. And uh, yeah, so that's what it is. So if you if you would like to have a, a checklist of things to do that is going to be Northern Hemisphere, if you live in Australia, it might not work for you, but Northern Hemisphere, if you want to do that, um, then please join my email list. My email list is, uh, um, it's, a, it's a lovely email list to be on, to be honest, because uh, I just tell a lot of stories. It's a lot of um, a lot of good things and feed your soul. That's what we do. Awesome. And so we'll, music. We'll put the link. music too. <laughs> we'll put the link in the show notes, but it's Kayla right. Brooke. Is it Kayla Brooke.com or Kayla Brooke? Kayla Brooke.com. Yes. Okay. That's Kayla C-A- with a C. C-A-Y-L-A-B-R-O-O-K-E, Kayla Brooke. Yes. And we'll put that yeah. in the show notes. I highly recommend you guys do that. Um, because she she does, she's a great storyteller. She's got great music and you get the feed your soul stuff. So definitely do that. Anything okay. else you want to say before we close out today, Kayla? This has been such an awesome uh, you know, training, really. Oh, well, good. I'm I'm glad to just thank you for having me. And here's my phrase. Every day is the perfect day to feed your soul. Thanks for listening to The Profitable Musician Show. I would love to know your takeaways and aha moments from this episode. Leave me a comment over at ProfitableMusician.com so I can bring you more of the information, interviews, and resources that you love. Thanks to Rondi Fay, one of my Academy members, for providing the music for our podcast. You can check her out at rondifay.com. That's R-A-N-D-I-F-A-Y.com. Just remember, knowledge is power, but without implementation, it is useless. And inspiration without action is merely entertainment. But I know you're not just a dreamer, you are a doer. And I promise I'll be here every week to support you and remind you that you can be a profitable musician. 